Hi, I'm Matt Williams, and welcome back to Soil Lab. Today we're going to be doing our three-month update trial on our pH adjustment study. If you're not familiar with how the experiment's set up or what the first month results looked like, be sure to check out the videos linked above. So today we're going to dive more or less right into the results, but maybe just a little bit of information about just how many soil tests we've ran. We've got four unique soils. In each of those soils, we have four unique treatments and one that remained untreated. So to date, we've ran 180 individual soil tests in support of this trial. I'm really excited to share this information with you and I hope that it can help drive decisions in your lawn and garden. So first of all, I want to address some of the questions we got in the comments. One of the questions was, will you be tracking that untreated control throughout the whole study? And the answer there is certainly. We'll be tracking it and have been tracking that untreated control and we'll do so for another month. So the other question we got was in regards to our irrigation water pH. Our irrigation water pH has been running slightly acidic with a pH that ranged minimally from about 6.8 to 7.0. With that being said, let's go ahead and start looking at some results. So the first set of results that I want to look at with you are in our very acidic soil. And in this very acidic soil, it had a starting pH of 4.28, so far below that optimal range, whether we're looking at a lawn or a garden. And so we used several different treatments, different rates of both dolomitic lime and calcitic lime to try to increase this pH. Now, I want you to recall that this was just a single treatment. No extra treatments have been made, nor will they for this trial. Maybe in follow-up research, we'll add in multiple applications and different products and amendments. In this experiment, we just applied it a single application. We could view that at planting or early in the spring. All right, so in this very acidic soil, what did we learn? Well, I think it's important to remember that the starting pH for all of these was the same. The starting pH for each of these treatments was right at 4.28. Again, that's what we were classifying as very acidic. Our untreated control is the first treatment that I want to look at, and it wasn't treated. We've just been watering it with deionized water. And recall, that water pH was slightly acidic at about 6, 8 to 7. Uh, even though that was slightly acidic, it's a higher pH than the starting point in this soil. Well, what we saw was we started at that pH of 4.28, and it increased to 4.32 in the untreated control. Now, I ran the statistics, and the statistics say that that's not significantly different. Uh, the numeric value is, however, trending up, so that'll be a fun one to watch as we move forward in the next month or so. With the dolomitic lime, what we saw is after that first month, we saw a pretty good increase, and we see that evidenced here, but now those pHs are starting to creep back down. That tells me there might be a need for a split application, say in the spring and the fall of the year, maybe even across several years. Our calcitic lime has dropped a little bit at the low rate uh, and a little bit at the high rate as well, but it's holding fairly steady. Again, since our pH is changing through time, I would say that we might want to consider those split applications, whether that's in the lawn or the garden. In terms of these rates, our 40 pound rate is really targeted at a high lawn rate and that 80 pound rate is really targeted at a pre-plant garden rate. 80 pounds per thousand in a turf grass situation would be far too much to feasibly put out in most situations. Now let's go ahead and take a look at our acidic soil. In our acidic soil, just as in our very acidic soil, we use the same treatments. So both dolomitic and calcitic lime at the 40 and 80 pound per thousand rates. Well, what did we learn here? Well, the starting point for the pH here was 6.06. Um, would I be amending this soil and changing this pH in all reality? M maybe not, but for the sake of the study, I thought it warranted research. So let's see how it changed through time. Again, we started at that 6.06 .06 level. Our untreated control, which was just irrigated throughout the study, uh, decreased ever so slightly to 5.97. Now again, I'm running statistics on all this, and statistically that wasn't a significant difference, so we can say that it remained more or less unchanged. We see the same trend in our acidic soil as we did in our very acidic soil, in that we got immediate increases in pH regardless of treatment. We can see that here on the left after that one month. And you can see we increased from a pH just above six all the way up to over seven in the case of our calcitic lime at the high rate, which was 80 pounds per thousand. 
But we start to see the same trend regardless of it being dolomitic lime or calcitic lime and regardless of rate. And that's that we see this downward trend between months one and three. So it's becoming more acidic. I'm going to go back to what we mentioned earlier. This is telling us that we might want to consider split applications through time such as spring and fall. Now I'd like to go ahead and move over to our basic soil. All right, so now we're looking at this slightly more sandy basic soil. The starting pH on this soil was 7.49. Now because of that slightly acidic irrigation water, pH 6.8 or so, we did see a natural downward trend. So we saw our untreated control reduced from 7.49 down to a neutral pH of 7. So keep that in mind that when our untreated control received no amendments, so no sulfur, no citric acid, that pH of the soil still was reduced. Well, let's see what the amendments did. Our citric acid at both 2 and 4 pounds showed no real significant differences from one another, and statistically, they grouped with the untreated control as well. Now that being said, we did, see, um, we did see a significant change at the beginning of the study. So I'm going to come back to that same trend. Perhaps multiple applications are what we would need using the citric acid. And I know others have studied that and experienced that multiple applications of the citric acid have acidified their soil. That single application in this study didn't quite show us that. When we used elemental sulfur at either 4 or 8 pounds per thousand, we are starting to see that downward trend and it is significantly different than the other treatments, but just not from one another. So the elemental sulfur most significantly reduced soil pH in this study, but recall that the irrigation water was driving that pH down as well. Elemental sulfur certainly can take time for pH adjustment in many soils. Our very basic soil was the one that we knew was going to be most challenging. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So now we're in our very basic soil. This one had the starting pH of 8.36. And if you recall in our one month update video, we didn't really see any significant differences amongst treatments. So what does that mean come months two and three? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. You can see that all of these are grouped really tightly with one another all the way at month three. Now, I don't want the distance between these lines to skew you visually. I, let's go ahead and take note that we're only ranging from pH 8.1 to 8.4. So we saw a larger change in this sandy soil with the untreated control than we saw in any treatment here. Well, why is that? Well, this high pH soil is also probably relatively highly buffered, which means it's pretty resistant to change in pH. So a soil like this, we're going to need to be more diligent with, experiment with different amendments, and be sure that we're using split or multiple applications through the years, not just the seasons. So what's the strategy with a soil like this that's so resistant to change in pH? Well, it's going to be persistence. We're going to want to use multiple applications within a season and then across seasons as well. So let's recap this really quickly. Our very, very acidic soil, what did we learn? Well, we learned that we can adjust soil pH with dolomitic lime or calcitic lime, but that the calcitic lime seemed to have a little more rapid and lasting activity. When we moved to our acidic soil, we really saw the same thing. Even though that starting pH was at six, we saw very similar trends as in that very acidic soil. Then we moved to our basic soils, where instead of using dolomitic lime and lime, we were using elemental sulfur and citric acid. And what we learned, or what the takeaways were for me anyway, is that the citric acid is likely going to need multiple applications within a season to move that pH needle in the right direction. The elemental sulfur seemed to be working, albeit slowly, and again, probably looking at multiple applications through time. This highly buffered, very high pH soil that we have here, this very basic one, we're having a hard time moving the needle in the right direction there, so we may want to experiment with different products, different amendments, and different rates and timings. So what are the takeaways? At the risk of being redundant, our takeaways are that regardless of amendment, we could typically move the needle in the right direction with the exception of this very basic soil. Another takeaway from this video I'm hoping is that irrigation water can and certainly does affect the pH of your soil. And that can occur throughout the growing season. And this is true for both low pH irrigation water, slightly acidic like we're dealing with, as well as very basic water that might be bringing your soil pH up. That irrigation water pH can certainly bring challenges to pH adjustment in the lawn and in the garden. 
The other takeaway or through line is that in this study, we use single applications, as we know many folks do that. One thing I'd love for all of us to consider is splitting those applications up. Again, perhaps that's a spring as well as a fall application, or in the case of citric acid, maybe that's multiple applications within a season on tighter intervals. When you're trying to adjust your pH, annual monitoring of your soil pH is gonna be the best way to track your progress. I saw in the comments that many of you have been working on adjusting your pH and just not having that success. I'd say continue to experiment, continue to monitor, and figure out a program that works in your lawn and your garden. We've loved seeing your comments uh, suggesting other amendments like ammonium sulfate and various acids. Keep the comments coming in the suggestions and we'll try to incorporate those in future videos. Hopefully, this is helping you drive decisions in your lawn and your garden. If you enjoyed this video and are gonna put this information to use, please like, subscribe, and we'll see you in the lab.